Oh my goodness, welcome back to another episode of Big Pig Fishing. Today, I got something pretty fun for us today. I've had a lot of requests on uh, videos more about the Shadow Caster. So, if you haven't seen the full review video I did on the Naked Shadow Caster, um, the buyer's guide, if you will, then you need to check that out. I'll leave that up here in the corner. Uh, but today I'm going to talk to you about how I have mine rigged out real quick. And uh, I'm actually here on the lake about to put in. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of pre-fishing for a tournament I have coming up. Uh, so I just thought I'd take you through maybe my tournament setup. This is mostly pre-tournament setup, but the only things that are really going to change is some of the rod selections. So I'll just go through on kind of how I store some of the things and walk you through the entire setup as I have it. So let's jump right into this. All right, guys, first things first, you kind of notice that I did get a trailer for this. It is not in the best condition. Oh, I haven't completely finished it. I actually did put some lights on it, but they uh, broke off. I, I hit a fence, long story short. Anyway. So we're going to start at the front of the shadow caster here, kind of work our way back. Now this is going to be the setup that I use 90% of the time. Tournaments, daily fishing, fun fishing, the only exception will be if I'm river fishing, I won't have a few of the things on here. And the reason that I set up for tournaments and play fishing the same is very simple. Think of it like the NFL, for instance. When... The New England Patriots are practicing their routes as a wide receiver. They're wearing the helmets. Now, why are they wearing the helmets? They might not be wearing pads, but why are they wearing the helmets? Well, because when they go to catch a ball, they want to have the same thing in their peripheral, peripheral visions as they would when they're actually playing a game. So their helmet is going to be on during a game, so they need to practice with that helmet on so that you know, the face masks and all that stuff come into play during practice and in the game. So that concept is the same with fishing, right? I'm going to have everything I'm going to have for play fishing for tournaments. Why? Accessibility. For instance, my net being right here, that's always there because when I go to land my six pounder for tournaments or for play fishing, I know that my net is right there and I can practice netting a fish because it's in the same spot every single time. So anyway, we're gonna start at the front. I recently picked up this Anchor Wizard and it is probably the newest accommodation on the boat. And I'll tell you what, it has been amazing. So I have the Anchor Wizard here with a three pound, uh, I guess they call them grappling, uh, grappling anchors. Anyway, it comes out of the tube. It can open up if you want it. I have it locked so it's not, three pounds is plenty. And then it just comes with this cord here. It's 25 foot. And then it just comes here to the actual anchor wizard mount itself. And these are very simple to operate. You put it in one direction and it loosens it and it drops the anchor down. And then you just crank it up to retrieve your anchor. And it's freaking phenomenal. I'll give you one more quick view of that from the front. So as I drop it, the anchor drops to the ground. And as I reel it up, the anchor comes up, <clears throat> slides into place. Amazing addition. So much easier than grabbing a rope, throwing it over the side. You guys know. And this retails about 100 bucks. Absolutely worth the money. Anchor's not included. Those are pretty cheap. Uh, okay, moving on. So as you guys know, I have my battery in the hatch here. I'm not going to dig into that too much. Also in the hatch, I will keep a tow rope. That's actually right here. Um, and that helps for me launching the kayak by myself, as well as if I get into any issues, I have a rope right here. So moving on, uh, you guys probably seen my unboxing video for my new Garmin unit. If you have not, check that out. Here's another link. And uh, I didn't show you guys how I set it up, and I'm not going to talk too much about how I set it up today. I'll probably do a separate video. But basically, I have my transducer arm that just swings over down on the side. And that sits in the water and uh, then I have my actual head unit right here and then moving on over I installed just a single rod holder 
and it may look like it's pretty far up from the seat. There's a couple reasons for that. Eventually, I do have to paddle through some issues even though I have my motor, so it's out of the way from the paddle strokes, <clears throat> and uh, it sits nice and flat uh, downwards so that I can still cast over it just fine. And uh, as we move back, I just have my fishing players kind of wedged in right there, holds up pretty good. We're moving on to the seat. So under the seat, I just have these little dollar store totes, simple. And this is where and how I store all of my soft plastics. So I know there's a lot of people out there asking about soft plastic storage. In most of your fishing kayaks with a raised seat, there's plenty of room under there to slide some of these boxes in. It's a must. I'm serious, this has been a lifesaver. So in this one, I'll have most of my creature baits, crawl baits, uh, bugs, things like that. And then in this tote, I have all my worms. Um, I have some brush hogs. Uh, here's a pair of braided scissors. Uh, long story short, uh, I got my Ned rigs, all that stuff in here. So I got those organized to my ability, and they work pretty well. I know where everything's at. And then, of course, the good old fish grips. Um, huge for kayak fishing because we're catch and release, so when you first hook into those things, they're pretty squirmy. So you hook them, throw them over the side of the boat for a while, they calm down. Oh, I did forget the, uh, the measuring board here. Uh, this is actually, I'm borrowing this from a friend, try it out, I'm thinking about buying one. The collapsible uh, idea was a little weary to me, but I'm starting to, starting to like it. So, once again, why do I need to bring my measuring board if I'm not actually fishing uh, tournaments? Well, if you hook into a big one, no one's going to believe you unless you got pictures. So, all right. Moving on over, we have the life vest. Now, most important thing is my life vest. If you are not fishing with a life vest when you're on the kayak, it doesn't matter if you are freaking just going out to look at a point, you wear your life vest. I've uh, fished a lot of tournaments now, and I swear every time I go out and meet the guys, someone is telling me how they rolled their kayak. Very, very important. And then I have my kayaking uh, gloves, the fingerless tip gloves. They are amazing for when I actually have to paddle. Moving on back to the storage. And this is where all the tackle and magic poles and all that fun stuff happens. So we're just going to talk about the rods for a second. So I currently hold seven rods on my vessel at all times. And I usually go by the 223 rule, and that will be two spinning rods or light rods, two heavy like jigging rods and a frogging rod, and then three kind of universal. Now, will that be a moving bait, a couple medium heavies, some mediums? That's kind of the rules that I follow. Now, those are all gonna switch up depending on tournament tournament day and what the fish are wanting on that lake, things like that. When I pre-fish, I'll, uh, I'll hop into my arsenal and kind of pick which rods I need and get the seven that I think will be most vital that day. So today I'm just running uh, two spinning rods. This one here is actually uh, a new loose uh, rod, spinning rod that I'm actually uh, kind of testing out here to see if it's gonna fit into my tournament arsenal. Uh, most of my spinning rods are medium heavies. I don't have a, a lightweight. This is a six foot light uh, spinning rod. So I'm gonna kind of test that out today and see if that's gonna fit. Now this is a super budget spinning rod. So just kind of testing it out here. Uh, so yeah, I got those two spinning rods here. This is a medium heavy. This is for, you know, so maybe some Texas wig, weightless Texas rigs and Nico rigs, some things with some bigger hooks. Uh, and then we're going to jump into some of my heavier rods. This right here is my Luz carbon fiber or carbon fire. Um, this, this is a heavy rod. It's for punching, uh, Texas punches and stuff like that. Anyway. Uh, and then I got three of just like uh, medium heavies or mediums for crankbaits, moving baits, things like that. So this is kind of how I have it set up in this melt crate. Now this isn't your traditional size melt crate. This melt crate is a little bit larger uh, than a traditional one. This one can hold six Plano boxes laying down. And then I just keep my terminal box right on top and it sits in there. And then when I'm going down the road, I just strap it over on top of itself. And then, yeah, moving on from there, we have the back hatch that I installed uh, by myself. It did not come with the kayak. I also have another video for that linked up. 
here in the corner if you guys want to check how I put this hatch in. And in this hatch, um, pretty basic what I have in there. I have a toe strap for my um, kayak wheels. And then I have just a bag, Ziploc bags that have uh, multi-tools in them, some fuses, uh, electrical tape, any issues that I might have on the water to deal with that. And then moving back to my pride and joy, um, it's a little rough right now, it's been beaten up, but if you guys haven't seen this video, out of everything I've suggested, you guys need to check this out, is going to be the actual motor itself. Now, I've had this motor on for seven months now, nothing but very happy with it. So, got my port here, runs up to my battery. Everything that you guys need to know about this is in that video, full installation video of it. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. I am going to uh, take this bad boy out on the water. All right, guys. Well, as you probably can hear, the wind is, is pretty rough out here. I didn't bring my actual uh, wind mic, so it's going to be very rough audio. So I think I'm going to end the video here and just uh, hopefully you guys took away from what I usually rig up and how I kind of rig my shadow caster out to be able to actually go out and fish pretty much all the time and especially tournaments this is basically the setup I use so uh, if you guys have any more questions about the actual setup just go ahead and leave it in the uh, description or the comments below and I'll definitely get back to you guys so uh, I'm just gonna fish the rest of the day I'm gonna shoot some content for some review videos I got a review a couple of review videos coming up on some uh, new loose rods and reels that I got so if you guys uh, want to grab a couple new bait casters and a couple spinning rods go ahead and check these review videos out they should be out very soon and uh, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button it helps out a lot and also it'll notify you guys if you hit that little bell icon to when these videos are coming out so if you guys are waiting to uh, get your hands on some of these new lose products some of them have already been out but if you guys are excited to check these out hit that uh, subscribe button and we'll get you out, okay? Well, thank you so much for watching. Hope this video helped you guys to catch more fish. And remember, I'm proud of you.